So well, welcome everyone yeah. um, to our cancer webinar brought to you by the Allah Group, uh, co combination of Bounty, Body Kind, and uh, Lisa Rally. And the objective of tonight, when we decided to do this cancer webinar, was to showcase some experts in this particular area, a very serious area around cancer. And as a business, we have seen more and more people coming into the business, being referenced or referred to us by oncologists. And um, they either suffering from cancer or they're in remission. And uh, someone's told them to get onto a rebounder. And so what we thought we'd do tonight is bring some experts together, folks that understand the lymphatic system, um, you know, a doctor from Vitality, which I'll introduce when we do. And the objective tonight is to do a few things. Number one is to give more and more of us insight into this, this, this thing called cancer. I think that's a, it's a, it, we talk about it, we hear people have it all the time, but really what we want to do is bring forward a story from someone that's very, very close to Lisa. Mm. And um, his yes, story yeah. is, uh, uh, we can't wait to hear his story. Mm. Um, so Mark Pilgrim is with us tonight, and yeah. he's going to uh, tell us a little bit about his cancer journey to date and, um, and just give us some insight there. I'm really looking forward to, it, forward to it from a personal perspective because cancer is a thing that I've heard about all the time. But in terms of, you know, what do you look out for? What type of lifestyle should you live to reduce your risk and exposure to it? Um, and then once you have it, what do you do? And then in your remission phase, you know, what do you do then? So what we've done is we've collated a bunch of experts. They're going to give us some ideas and insights in this regard. And um, you'll notice with this webinar, for those of you that have been on our webinars before, there's no specials going to pop up on the screen. Um, there's no sales. This is an informational webinar. This is truly something that we're doing on behalf of everyone to give people, experts, a platform to articulate and educate us. That's, that's the objective of tonight. When you leave tonight, we want you to leave a little bit more insightful around what type of lifestyle you should live, um, to watch out for certain flags when they do occur. That you have more control than you think you have. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. And that you, you can actually have an influence on this. We've had studies. Lisa and I were talking about this. Uh, one of the studies that she mentioned we've seen together, and we can't really articulate the particular study, mm -hmm. but it says like if you live an active lifestyle and you live X amount yeah. of... If you, if you exercise, it was just exercise Just related. exercise. Yeah, that if you are active and you live um, an, an active lifestyle and you're exercising regularly, that you reduce your chances of um, getting cancer by 42%. I mean, that's like almost 50%. Yeah, and that, that the, massive, you know, the study for that cohort, stats, yeah, know? it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, and that, that is your choice. Like every day you have the choice when you wake up, like should I just lie in bed, um, you know, or should I actually move my body and celebrate yeah. what it can do? And we have more choices than we think we yeah. do. Just before we introduce all our guests, a lot of our guests are going to talk about mo mobility and movement and exercise within a generic context. Obviously, from our, from our perspective, we believe in rebounding, specifically mm -hmm. as a modality. And the reason we believe in that modality specifically is because of its transversality, <laughs> Um, its applicability to pretty much any cohort in the, in the human race, right? So if you a three-year-old, 103 years old, it's the entire age demographic, rebounding is applicable to you. If you are an active person today and uh, you, you cross-fitting or you trail running, or you're just a general runner, rebounding is something that you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day and into your active rest days. If you're a couch potato and you've never exercised before, it's a great modality to do there right at home, get on it, rebound. And we're going to talk about the health benefits from, from somebody that's had clear experience with cancer patients um, in an oncology center utilizing rebound. And we're going to talk about that specifically. Just, what is the lymph? I mean, it's yeah. kind of like this anomaly. You know, everyone knows a lot about the blood system and the heart and the pump and blood pressure, but not a lot of people know yeah, about, about the lymph. lymph. And, you know, since COVID, I think it's become more um, of a topic, a hot topic, mm. because of uh, COVID saying that it's inflammatory um, kind of a virus and what it does to our lymphatic system and, you know, getting rid of toxins. And we've all kind of perked up our ears, like, what is this lymph system? Like, how can we, um, you know, make it cleaner? How do we detoxify our bodies? How do we stimulate the lymphatic system what is this thing and um, I'm so excited because mm. for the last 20 years since being a health and fitness um, sort of expert or professional um, I've been trying to talk about this for a long time and a lot of the time many like a decade ago it was quite airy fairy um, and now finally it's kind of been taken seriously in our world in the fitness and wellness world people are starting to understand lymph more talk about it more and uh, that makes me really excited yes. finally there's a platform to talk about this because um, it's, you know, fitness and wellness is not just about um, movement. There's a lot more that goes into it than that, like with, with regards to stress management and digestion and our lymph care and uh, nutrition and supplementation. 
asleep. There's so much more that mm. people need to know, and that's why we've, we've done these webinars for the last year, is to really try and empower people that um, there's so much that you can do and mm. not you know, just your genetic makeup and, well, here's your DNA, sorry, but there's a lot that you can actually do, and you just need to be empowered, educated, and inspired to take some of those first steps and take control of your life mm. and con take control of your health. Um, just because your parents had it or whatever the case is does not mean that you will get it and you must sit down and just wait for it to happen. Um, you are actually in control a lot of the time. So we want to give you those tips. We want to educate you and empower you so that you can live a better life and you can like, defy those odds, mm. you know? Yeah, we want, to, we want to welcome all the folks that are partners of ours. So we've got tonight, we've got someone from Vitality here, Dr. Patel. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to talk about it from a medical perspective, um, cancer. Um, I had a brief with him and what he said to me in the car when I was listening to him was quite fascinating. I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. Vitality is a partner of ours. So if you're a Vitality member, you go to our website, you'll see we're very closely aligned from a partnership perspective. We've also got the Cancer Association of South Africa here um, tonight. Megan's going to be dialing in and I'm going to introduce mm -hmm. her now as our first speaker. And uh, we got the seal of approval. And I'm going to ask her some, as you know, some aspects of that seal of approval uh, related to rebounding. And since then, you know, we've been helping uh, clients, patients for many, many, many years uh, on, you know, rebounding and helping them to stimulate the lymphatic system, keep them moving in a non-impact way and a convenient way and all of that. But since we've announced our partnership um, and endorsement by the Cancer Association of South Africa, um, so many of, um, so many clients and people have come out of the woodwork mm -hmm. and they want to know more and they want to yep. learn more. And so big thanks to them for, you know, supporting us, for endorsing yeah. us, because it really is, I think, a partnership that is going to help many, many people yeah. and create a lot of awareness, which was yeah. needed. We've also got Oncology Buddies here tonight, and it's a publication uh, specifically targeted at cancer patients, and it speaks about both breast cancer and, and cancer overall. And we're going to give Sam an opportunity to talk about this publication and its intention and its purpose, and uh, just to give some exposure to that, because I think it's very important that people understand that these aids and these things exist to, to help you along your way. Mm -hmm. But to kick it off, let's um, introduce uh, Megan. And I'm going to try. It's Clayt Spence. Megan Clayt Spence. Mm -hmm. um, she's with the Cancer Association of South Africa. Um, we've done a video before with Megan. And Megan, I'm going to ask you a few questions. So just welcome. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Hello. Uh, Thank you. It's great to be with you tonight. Yes. Thanks so much for making the time. Uh, you know, the first question I want to ask you is, demystify the Cancer Association of South Africa. Who are you folks? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, definitely. So it was an association um, or an organization founded already in, in, in 1931. So you can do the math. Mm -hmm. And what is really important is we have a mission, and that is to be um, or the preferred non-profit leader that enables research, particularly you know, surrounding uh, cancer risk. But we are looking at three different aspects when it comes to, to cancer and cancer reduction. Is we're looking at research, which we actively involved in um, looking at to educate the public on the different aspects also very importantly is support and this all comes through with things like advocacy we have an advocacy team we um, play a watch role dog and looking at after patients rights very important and of course very importantly as well we now bring in something like this which is our cancer seal of recognition to further educate and support people um, in helping reduce the risk of cancer and people that already are experiencing cancer to support them as well Awesome. So I'm going to put you in a little bit of a corner. I'm going to ask you this, the seal that, we've, that we got from the Cancer Association of South Africa. I mean, just take us through the process of assigning the seal, um, the seal of approval for the particular model for rebounding and um, just the science behind it. Because I will say something. Every time, just for the audience knows, every time I engage with the Cancer Association of South Africa, I always trip over myself because I say things and people like Megan always go, Where's the research paper that supports that <laughs> sentence? And, and I love yes. it. I love it because you're data driven. You've got science behind it. So give us some more insight into that seal specifically. Absolutely. So the seal actually was um, initiated and we have got the approval from the Department of Health um, in 2011, which was quite exciting. And so we put in that time with the evidence that was available, a good level of evidence, we put in a, a dossier and that was accepted and we, the, the, the seal of recognition for the Cancer Association was born. We had different um, areas, we're looking at foods, you know, sunscreens, etc. Uh, uh, but then we went into last, in the 
last year a new category, although we've already had a partner who looked at physical activity, we then decided to shift everyone that looked at physical activity uh, and, and offered it in some other way into the actual physical activity mm. category and that then came about. So what was very exciting from that is then I had to go and look at some evidence mm. and a good level of evidence that would show that physical activity is really important firstly to, to reduce your risk of cancer and then what it can do after you have experienced cancer. So we look at different criteria and we do want to make sure that it's criteria that's measurable. And of course this criteria will be updated as more and more evidence comes available, but we use international guidelines, peer reviewed and um, meta-analyses. So all this very high level of um, documented and published research on which we base everything. So when it came to um, the seal with Bounty, it basically meant that you filled in you know, extensive forms and questions that we had. Then we, I assessed it, I then made a proposal, we have a research committee, um, we have different people and of expertise sitting on this committee. We then pose it to them, so it's not a decision one of us make. We all then pose different questions, and if we're in agreement, we come back and say we can go ahead. And that's exactly what we did. And one thing that's very important to us with physical activity is that the people that would be um, basically presenting classes would be of that caliber that they do stay abreast of the latest research you know, in the fitness arena. Mm -hmm. So that would be very important to us because we're not experts necessarily mm -hmm. right. in it. So we need to make sure that the people that are um, are going to, to be the ones that are helping to support uh, you know, our mission of reducing the risk of cancer. Okay. So today I know that the Cancer Association at the moment, and I know you'll do more, in the physical category, the mm -hmm. only physical exercise modality today endorsed and has the seal is rebounding. So if you do go to the Cancer Association of South Africa's for website now. today, for now, um, <laughs> rebounding is up there. So um, we, we thank yes. you for choosing rebounding. <laughs> Fantastic. We've got two partners and we're very excited. And of course, you know, when it comes to physical activity, we definitely want to increase the options that are available, but rebounding has already you know, ticked all those blocks. So we're very right. happy to have you on board and as a partner. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Megan, thanks so much for making the time tonight and representing the Cancer Association mm -hmm. of South Africa. I think the key message mm -hmm. from the Cancer Association of South Africa is how important movement is, how important exercise mm -hmm. is, and an active lifestyle relative to reducing your risks associated with having cancer. And uh, they keep speaking about that. And I'm happy that for now, um, rebounding is the modality that's got the seal and the only one for now. Um, so may, long but may that last. Just in general last. move, people. Yeah, just in general move. <laughs> just move. But we do have a, a more extensive interview. So, uh, you know, we spoke about, what was it, about two months ago? And that interview actually is Online. live on yeah. your, on my yeah. Facebook page, on the Lisa Valley Facebook page. So we have it there. So if anybody would like to go and listen, it is 20 or 30 minutes long, mm -hmm. and it goes into way more detail um, around uh, the risk and cancer and exercise and movement and the science. So for those that uh, are wanting to learn a little bit more about it, you can yeah. go watch that interview. And guess what? Um, Mark Pilgrim was coming up. Um, and my understanding is that he's a Cancer Association of South Africa ambassador. So um, we'll get him to speak a little bit about that too. So there's quite great congruence there. Thanks so much for your time today, Megan. Yes, Jake. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Thanks Megan. Megan. Okay, Thanks, ciao. Ciao. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Okay, so our next, our next guest sure. is in studio here with yes. us. Um, Gabby I'm going to have you introduce Gabby. <laughs> well, it's got quite a title here. So uh, Gabby Curie, uh, she's an occupational therapist, but she's also an oncology rehab therapist and a lymphedema therapist. Correct. So that is quite something. I mean, you must get a lot of incredible patients coming through your doors every single day. It must Definitely, be so yeah. busy. Busy, rewarding. I mean, you, yes, you meet the most incredible rewarding. people. So um, tell us a little bit about what this title means. So what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm. Who are the patients that you see? How do you help them? And yeah, right, I mean, it would be lovely to hear, like, what does this actually mean? OK, yeah. so yeah. let me just break it down, basically. Okay. So we see patients. Um, throughout the, the various stages of their cancer treatment. So when they, from diagnosis, uh, post-chemo, post-surgery, and then throughout radiation. But then there's also a really important part or group of patients, the survivorship group. Mm. Um, your sure. patients who have you know, gone through treatment and are either on a type of chronic medication like a hormone blocker or those that are living in, in remission, essentially. Um, and then depending on where they are in that journey, the treatment is tailored to their needs and um, their functions and how those functions have, have been impacted. Right. 
um, by the specific treatments. Mm -hmm. So we basically look at everything other than the cancer. So you're on chemotherapy, um, let's discuss the different side effects and how that's uh, impacting your function. Yeah. So an example of that would be something like neuropathy. A lot of the mm -hmm. patients get pins and needles in their hands and their feet, and that impacts day-to-day -day things like being able to button up shirts or open bottles. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we just go through treatments and kind of rehabilitate that that process, for example. So it's it's a very, very broad scope. Well, where where um, is your centre physically located? So I, I practice out of the Breast Care Centre of okay. um, Excellence um, at Mill Park Hospital. So primarily it's really famous that yeah. you guys have done yeah. such incredible work. Yeah, I mean, there. we have an, a run by the incredible Professor Carol Benn. So mm -hmm. she, um, yeah, is an amazing advocate for breast cancer specifically, an amazing surgeon. Um, so mm -hmm. working with her has been an incredible opportunity. Sure so the people that get cancer, Mm. Just, it must be such a surprise. Is it a surprise when people go, well, oh, wow, now it's me? Oh, I mean, what's, what, what experiences do people have? That you, so it's, that you it's, well, that, that often is it. You know, breast cancer, I mean, is, there is a hereditary link, but it's so small. I think the statistic mm -hmm. is sitting at something like worldwide, only 5% of your cases are actually hereditary. Oh, wow. um, most are just sporadic, so either lifestyle-induced or, you know, we never actually know what, wow. what causes it. I think the person mm -hmm. who finds that just out... Just say that again. So you're mm -hmm. saying 5% of breast cancer cases worldwide hereditary. is actually hereditary yeah. based. So a lot of people think that, wow. it, you know, that's kind mm -hmm. of the, the yeah. driving factor. I got it from my grand or I got it from my... Fair enough. And, and it yeah. is. I mean, we can't, we can't neglect it, but that other 95% percent is, is, is other reasons triggering it. Yeah. Like? Which is trauma? Yeah, often, trauma, yeah. I mean, uh, stress. Stress mm, is the number stress. one kind of okay. factor in it. There's yeah. a lot of um, controversy around diets and what we're eating. You know, are there more hormones in our food nowadays? Okay. Are those triggering kind of cancers as well? Mm. Um, but I think the person who cracks that, that answer on the head, you know, that nail on the head the is... Why. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's incredible. So, I mean, some of the cases that you're mm. seeing at the moment, give us some testimonies of some of the folks that you're treating. And what does that mean when you put them into treatment? Yeah. Is it they show up, you put a needle in their arm, they get no, their, no, their no, spider so juice? My, in mine's not medical at all. Mine. Oh, okay. It's just completely yeah, physical. There's a bit of, there's a, actually a lot of psychosocial factors to it. You know, oh, wow. you mentioned hearing that diagnosis. For most people, it, it comes out of the, the left wing. Mm. Um, and then having to deal with it. We often see patients only processing the information kind of post-surgery or post-chemo when they've got a gap in between that treatment regime because everything happens so fast from diagnosis. You know, you kind of want to get them on that treatment plan as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah. Um, there's no time to process or think or take it, it all in and it. you just yeah. got to get on with the next yeah. thing. Hey? Yeah. And then but that's, you know, it's home later. in essence, the, the whole role of rehab and what we're trying to advocate is something called prehabilitation. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. So when patients are diagnosed, they go and meet with a rehabilitation therapist and they discuss everything kind of to expect. You know, mm -hmm. so you, you're going to go and have chemotherapy. Now, what does that mean? Um, what can you look out for in terms of side effects? You're going to go have surgery. Um, they're going to remove lymph nodes, and then that opens up the discussion of, yeah. of lymphedema. lymphedema. Um, so, you know, just preparing the patient, equipping them, and, and empowering them, because essentially this process, this diagnosis, takes so much away from yeah. you. Jeez. You know, you're at the mercy mm -hmm. of your, your treatment protocol, mm -hmm. um, what you can and can't do, but to give the patient something back and say, actually, you can do this, you can exercise. Mm -hmm. It just gives them something. Wow. So, yeah. since, yeah. I mean, when I first met Lisa, mm. she s spoke about the lymph. And I was like, oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> then, and the years and years and years have gone by. And then I, obviously, I've, I've now, I've invested in the business. And, and we, I, I look at things in a lot more of an organic level. And I've looked yes. at the lymph. And the more I do research in my Google, <laughs> Googling way, not a scientific way in any way, it's absolutely fascinating. It's incredible. The, I mean, we understand the blood system mm. because it has a heart and everyone talks about the blood and, mm. you know, the, the, the blood diets and all the stuff that's around. But no one talks about your lymph. I mean, no. it, amongst our family, no but one talks about the lymph. Your doesn't flow and pump, you, you die quickly. But yeah. if your lymph doesn't do what it should, you die slowly. Well, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. like, but the they, one is quick and the one is slow. So, it's, uh, yeah, but they're but as important as each other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just so, so, is it true mm. yes, that definitely. the lymph is two to three times in volumetric size in terms of its volume bigger than your blood system? Well, it, it runs in, in you know, mm concurrently with your blood system. Okay. So where, where they meet essentially is at your, your capillary site. Okay. So they, one can't work without the other, essentially. Um, the latest science no, sh you know, now shows that your lymphatic system drains 100% of the fluid and the circ circulation wow. running through your body. 
Um, but often, you know, it's funny you mention that when patients come through and we have the discussion of your lymphatic system and lymphedema, they're like, what is that? Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got to discuss, you know, where it is in the body, what it does, and, and it's so, just... So quickly, tell me, okay, what is it and where? Yeah, I so, want to okay, know so for all those that are on <laughs> yeah. the line now and they're saying, okay, well, now tell us what it is. So tell us what is the function of the, of the lymphatic okay. system? How does it work? How does exercise increase the, the pumping action? Yes. How does it help to detoxify the body? Yeah. Okay. okay, so essentially your lymphatic system runs all over your body. It's um, made up of vessels and nodes and, and other structures. And its two primary functions are um, defense against infection and fighting disease and then drainage, um, you know, circulation okay. and drainage. So um, it meets at the site of the capillaries. It basically filters through um, lymph fluid. This fluid goes out into your tissue, um, filters out any toxins, any bad cells like viruses, cancer cells, things like that. It also feeds to what the tissue needs and then that goes back into your circulation system wow. and through other various organs and vessels. Wait, wait, you started off saying it's the thing, the, the first feature set that you gave it there. Yeah. Is it, it's your immunity. That's it. It's the core of your yeah. immunity. Yeah. So that's why often when people feel sick, the first thing they say like, oh, you know, my throat's up, my glands up. Those are lymph nodes. You've got lymph nodes sitting right here that are filtered through a virus or whatever's going through around the they're body. They're yucky. Yeah. Exactly. And they're up and they're inflamed. Um, so sure. so it's, it's, it's massive. And, and if your lymphatic system is not working properly, um, other than lymphedema, you do have quite a lot of other health problems or you're at risk of developing other health problems. So give problems. us like the, the early signs that your lymph is, is, is a problem. Um, what, so like so common from ones? an oncology basis, essentially, because what happens is mm -hmm. lymph nodes are often removed um, when they remove the tumor. So thankfully, and especially where I work, it's very lymph node sparing. So back in the day, we'd have doctors going in and removing all of the nodes they could find. And the patient was basically then you know, lymphedema was a guarantee. Oh, wow. um, now patients are less at risk of that. But the early signs that there's a bit of a problem, so visually you'll obviously see a, a mm. swelling, so it's unilateral at the site of where there's an obstruction or where the lymph nodes have been removed. Mm. Um, there'll be tightness in the arm, heaviness, so lifting the arm even to like a 90 degree flexion will be very difficult for the person. Um, if there's been nodes removed specifically in the axilla, so under the arm, we see something called axillary web syndrome, like cording, mm -hmm. and it literally looks like guitar strings under the arm, um, yeah, running down the arm like wow. that. So those are all indications that your lymphatic system is under strain. You need to do something, you know, either to, to activate it or to help reroute that lymph fluid elsewhere. Because so what, what do you tell draining. patients? Do you tell patients that have the, all these symptoms to go yeah. for a run? No, well, <laughs> I tell them to, to watch out for it. And then again, it just completely depends where they are in, in their recovery process. So right. if it's post-surgery, we say to them, you know, um, we'll do a little bit of manual lymph drainage or watch out for these. If you see any of these signs and symptoms, come back in. Um, there's a set protocol for patients that have that lymphedema triggered already. Right. But of course, the first line of defense is exercise. So the more you move, the more you're pumping, as you, you mentioned, you know, you pump those lymph nodes. You've got nodes that sit quite superficially and there's not a lot of muscle in those superficial um, areas. It's right. mostly tissue. So when you contract, you know, your muscle, yeah, you, you activate those nodes, but mm -hmm. not the ones that are sitting high. So you've got to do a pumping movement. Mm -hmm. And that's why something like rebounding is incredible um, because you're getting that constant pump and that constant activation. So, what, so just bef bef mm. before we get to like the rebounding, but you know, I sit down, and before I met Lisa, and, yeah. and, and but like, and I'm, what happens commonly out there, people are on board meetings, mm -hmm. they're on these Zoom sessions, or they're sitting in a boardroom for, mm -hmm. like, for an extended amount mm -hmm. of time throughout the day. Bio breaks show and they're back there again. And you're sitting for six, seven hours. I know it's not an oncology related yes, question, but is it's that a lymph problem? Yeah, is yeah. that a, is that something that affects your lymph, your sedentary office-based, work-based lifestyle? I mean, we could go into it from the scientific aspect and, and why that is. But if you're sitting stagnant for most of the day, of course you're, you're not you're not pumping blood around your body well enough. You're sitting stagnant. Right. Um, so even patients that are returning to work from the oncology aspect, we say to them, you know, you think you're just sitting at a desk and it's office-based, but that static positioning is is doing harm. Yeah. You've got to get up. You've got to move, change position, drop your arms, lift them up, you know, kind of get that variety of movement going. But as you say, a normal person kind of everyday life, it's also important to get that, that movement yeah. and that circulation going, otherwise you're not draining. Yeah, so we, we speak about this all mm -hmm. the time. How many people that Lisa and I speak to on a day, -to -day more so her, that have these symptoms mm -hmm. and it comes from not having incidental movement anymore. That's we used it. to get in the car, 
drive to work and then move from floor one to That's meeting it. room on the third floor. And, and yeah, you'd get a little bit of movement. Yeah, yeah. in between. You'd or you'd get us from yeah, one meeting room to the next. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And now you're often sitting and the you're fridge sitting. is two, two sticks away. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like you're Getting very, very like comfortable. You've got your, your slippers on, you like a blankie, <laughs> and you don't actually move for hours before you know it. You lift your head, you're like, oh, it's been three hours. I haven't actually moved my body. You've been crossing your legs, squeezing your body like that. No circulation at all. Yeah, so it's a big thing. And, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, I went to gym this morning so yes. I got up early at five o'clock I went to the gym and then um, so I did my workout yeah and then they go and they sit behind the desk from eight until five o'clock mm. or you mm. know for hours and hours on end thinking that well at least they worked out mm. and I've been trying to tell people and I see that science is it's kind consistent. of backing it all that it's not just about that you can't no. go to gym for an hour and then sit for nine you actually need to go to the gym because you need to you really push your heart yeah, it's um, and strengthen your heart. 100%. But then throughout the course of the day, you need to move for your lymph. It's a yeah. totally different thing. Like the one is a, is a heart thing mm. and the one is a lymph thing. Yeah. Um, they're different. Um, so don't Definitely. treat them the same. Definitely. You know, you can't think going to the gym now you've ticked the box. Yeah. You know, you also have to look at the incidental exercise mm. box and make sure you've ticked that one too. Yeah. And that's where mm. a lot of people fall short. And by the way, she does this. So when I'm sitting yes. at home in the gym, she gets on my up and bounces. I do. It's so easy. She puts the rebound in to me all the I'm time like, going jump, jump. Yeah. you got to jump now jump. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, let me and jump. the other day he was in board meetings and it was a crazy crazy mental fatigue day mm -hmm. and then he came down because he works often in the gym and he said yo i am so exhausted i'm like i'm i'm Just finished i work in the gym Whoa. on my laptop yeah not like i <laughs> work out uh, in yeah, the gym. Ironic. anyway and he comes down <laughs> and he says I'm, I'm so exhausted and i'm like don't don't uh, confuse your yeah. mental exhaustion it, with your physical fatigue. need that's it you know your body needs to move your brain might be tired mm -hmm. but your body is not mm. go and yeah. move and he went for a bouncy boot session like a rebound and run better. yeah and it and he was a different human at the dinner table. Look, i mean yeah. you, you look at it from a from a kid's um, perspective you know often kiddies are shouted at for being like adhd or moving quite a bit in their seats and they've brought that down so they probably are what we call proprioceptive seeking so you'll see mm. now in like a lot yeah. of schools and stuff they have jump breaks or movement breaks and they've got trampolines outside for kids to jump on and then come back because it's regulating yeah. mm. you know like from a, from a mental yeah. focus as well where does the energy go exactly it's you've got to and it's but it's got to be we should be learning from our kids a little bit more <laughs> that the fact yeah. that they're moving like this is not a bad thing we, yeah. it's a good thing it's mm. like it's, it's a great instinctive thing. almost hey? exactly Let, yeah. let's get to the rebounding bit mm. which is so when we spoke to you the first time Lisa was actually quite surprised because we don't really speak to the medical folks like yourselves. Okay. Uh, and, and when you said rebounding, we're like, okay, how do you use it? And the things that you said were very mm. fascinating. So bring rebounding within the context of treatment. Of a treatment. Yeah. So um, obviously post-op, those six weeks post-op, we don't advise patients to do any like excessive exercising and mm. things like that because we're worried about tissue healing and, and sutures yeah. and, and it's more wound healing aspect. Right. Um, and we're just preparing them for radiation if they need it. So making sure that they have good mobility in either their shoulder or, or hip um, kind of joints. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, I think it's an amazing form of exercise. So like you guys mentioned, you're not necessarily worried about age or fitness level. Um, it's not time, you know, you're not constrained to a certain time, like mm -hmm. a gym class or getting somewhere. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's quite a non-daunting um, right. form of exercise for mm. patients to get into. Mm. That's yeah. it. And if you tell them that it's going to give them the benefit to also kind of prevent lymphedema or keep them in a, in a state where they're not triggering that lymphedema, mm. obviously a patient's going to be thrilled to be doing that every day. Mm. We've um, seen a lot of lymphedema patients yeah. um, come through mm. our hands, just suffering from so much water, like, you know, swelling yes, really. Yeah. And they're wearing the, the stockings and mm. they are incredibly mm. tight and immobile. And yeah. You know, they rebound. Yeah. They do the health balance, they do the health walk. They don't always do the That's full amazing. fitness classes, but on the days where they're having a bit of an attack, you know, mm. but on the days that they're strong, they can. And then the days where they're not that strong, yeah. they're just doing the pumping action and mm. ha hardly even leaving the mat yeah. with their feet. They're just pumping, well, you know. Yeah. And I think what's beautiful about rebounding is, you know, a lot of exercise is forward propulsion. So you're yes. using momentum, you're moving forward. But the lymph system is an up and down system. Yes. So with rebounding, because of the, the motion of up, up and, down, and down, you're accelerating and decelerating at yeah. a G force that is really strong like four times the, the force the, of gravity mm -hmm. on a bungee rebounder and I think t two to three times on a spring rebounder mm -hmm. um, and you're getting that up and down motion so that is what is helping to pump the yeah. lymph up and down which is what it needs to do 100%. so the motion of rebounding is unusual you know yes. and that's why it works so effectively yes. with the lymph is what? the up and down versus the forward yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Well, I mean, before even Lisa and I spoke, I've got a few of my patients that are currently doing the rebounding program and they are in love with it. And they say if they go a day or, or two without doing it, they feel it immediately. Okay. You know, they're doing the bouncing programs. They're doing the bouncing yeah. programs. Oh, wow. So they say, you know, they feel that fatigue or they just feel like that limb starts to get a bit heavy again. And, and um, as soon as they get back into it, then they, they experience that relief. So, oh, wow. So when, when, when you're putting, like, so someone's going through the treatment and you mm. get them onto a rebound, mm. it, I mean, what are you seeing? Is it pretty much instantaneous, takes a few days? So it's swelling, I think. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. definite. It's, it's got to be in conjunction with, so um, either the wrapping, the process of actually mm. wrapping to get that swelling down if we're in a reduction phase. If we're in a maintenance phase where the patient is wearing more of like a compression garment and they're coming in for weekly or bi-weekly mm. checkups, that in conjunction with the rebounding is, is phenomenal because you've got that daily kind of input mm. as opposed to once a week manual drainage or once every second week manual drainage and things like that. You are actively pumping those lymph nodes and getting that lymphatic system working daily. And it's again, it's a thing about empowerment. You know, you say to a patient, you're going to do this for yourself. Um, you don't need a therapist there to do it for you. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. It's fantastic. That's something easy. Yeah. I mean, you can put it next to your mm. desk and just, there you go, one minute. That's every it. half an hour or one every minute. 15 minutes, you just get on there and just up yeah. and down. You can even be on a Zoom call. <laughs> yeah. Whilst you up and down. <laughs> if only bouncing. more corporates would get some rebounders for their, like, the, every floor. You yeah. know, so just go bounce there. Come yeah. on. Yeah. We've okay. got Vitality on. The Dr. Yeah. Patel is actually going to mm. speak next. And, you know, uh, as of we, we're doing a, well, Lisa's shooting a video pretty soon around how do you get to 10,000 steps to get your vitality points? <laughs> because I'm doing it, you know, when I don't even go out and I just do a couple of minutes here and there, yes. I get to 10,000 before midday, sure. like easily. Yeah. That's incredible. And it just makes me more productive, more alert, and my, I just don't get that, that, um, the fatigue, fatigue of just sitting all day. Mm. Use but the camera mute and um, the yeah. camera uh, camera yeah. off and mute <laughs> button <laughs> very wisely. Yeah. Quickly, get your 60 yeah. seconds That's in. That's it, 60 okay. seconds. I've got, to be, I've, got, I've got to specifically be very careful with <laughs> the audience that I'm on. But look, just close, what would you tell the audience out there today that may not be suffering from cancer, they're just mm. listening in because it's informational. Sure. And, uh, what, what advice would you give to someone that doesn't have it yet or doesn't have it? Mm. Um, what type of lifestyle I mean, do you have any insight there? That uh, it's obviously not just an opinion. As as preventative. Yes, as preventative. So yeah. I think the things that we can control, obviously, are things like diet, um, activities, life choices. So not smoking a lot or not smoking at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, keeping alcohol consumption to a minimum. Um, watching what you eat in terms of diet, um, food products, things like that. But but lifestyle in terms of exercise mm. is probably mm. your. The, the one of the things that we can impact the most. Yeah. And it's the low-hanging fruit. To That's me, it. I, like, it's the easier one to do. It's really, mm. for, okay, this is personal, and it's what I've seen <laughs> in my 20 years. It's quite hard to change your diet. Um, you mm. know, clean, I'm talking about perfection. It, yes. Cleaning up shop 80% of the time, it's actually, it's, it's quite easy. But the other 20%, it's really nice to be able to go and eat a pizza, you know, or to, be have, to have the things that you love. So for me, it's a little bit harder to to, to really make that diet 100% yeah. vegan, 100% or plant-based and, and no it. chemicals yeah. and no sugar and no dairy yeah. and all that no stuff. Champagne. No champagne. None, none of that. Mm. But exercise <laughs> is, a, is the lower hanging fruit. I often start clients first there and I say, let's move yes. because that's the happy hormones, mm. the serotonin, yeah. you get the, the reduction of the swelling, um, you feel better, mm. you want to naturally eat a little eat bit better, better if you're moving and you're feeling fit and stronger. So like for me, it starts with the movement and the rest will follow. You'll start mm. to respect your body more, you'll start to see the differences, feel better, and you'll want to naturally start putting mm. better food in. Um, it's easier to move and still have that reward of, of a nice something yes. than it is to have none of to the things you love, out. you know, very and then you true. don't move at all. No, it's like, about quality of life, you yes. know. Yes. Yeah. That but a balance, hey? Eh? Balance. Yeah. balance. And then take true. your limbs seriously is also yeah. what Gavin yes, wants to yes. say. Like, go, don't ignore. Go have a look up at what the lymphatic system is. Have a bit of a research. It's an amazing organ yeah. um, that not a lot of people know about, but very You know important. what I read the other day? They call it the, some, I don't know where, but I read it. They <laughs> say it's called the water of life. Mm. That if, mm. in fact, if your lymphatic system stops circulating and working, yes. that you could die within 24 to 48 hours. Mm. That is just... It's, it's, it's scary. fascinating, scary, exactly. And the fact that we just know so little about <laughs> it, but absolutely, go online, mm -hmm. do research. Cancer Association of South Africa has got lots of like the scientific yeah. research report stuff on there, on their properties. Oncology Buddies has a lot of magazine. Facebook groups as well. Yeah, they're going to yeah. talk about mm -hmm. it too. But yeah, just go take a look at Facebook. Go online and educate yourself mm -hmm. about the lymphatic system. And yeah. Gabby, yeah. thanks so much for your time thank tonight. You thank you, We thank really, you really guys. appreciate it. It was lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And again, just you know, if I keep, if I hear the experts speak it comes back to what you and I speak about all the time yeah. and and why we believe in rebounding so much and because it's actually it's 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 a health 
thing as much as it is a fitness, yeah. you know, strong strength, muscle, lean, weight loss thing, yeah. it's also a health thing. And well, that's we're what trying very doing. hard to educate people like that and mm -hmm. inform people that it's not um, actually a fitness modality. It, it is, it can be, and we use that uh, rebounder like that all the time. But I really, really would love people to start rebounding for that 10, 15 minutes a day, just like you brush your yeah. teeth, just like you have to eat breakfast, just like you take your multi multivitamins, you rebound. It just becomes a daily thing that you do. Let me respect my lymphatic system. Let yeah. me pump my lymph. It let me clean my teeth. Let me pump my lymph. Yeah, so hopefully <laughs> we'll get to that point. You know, it's, we do try and have fun on our rebounders and we bounce, we do crazy moves. And yes, that's all good and well. But uh, we are trying to educate people mm. and to, to post content that is just hey guys have you ever thought about maybe just doing a daily affirmation in front of the mirror and tell yourself how beautiful and strong um you are you know just doing something small 10 15 seconds at a time but but often mm -hmm. and just trying to show people that there's another way that it doesn't have to be this this big big scary thing jumping on a rebounder is um so scary and i'm going to fall off and it's i could never do the moves that lisa and tersha and whoever do on um on a rebounder it's so tricky there is another part to rebounding that really needs to be told and that is the health benefits and yeah. that's a lot of what we're wanting to educate people about. Okay, yeah. our next speaker is uh, Dr. Patel. Uh, so let's just bring him on screen there. Dr. Patel, mm -hmm. thanks so much for making mm -hmm. the time. I spent probably like five minutes with you the other day <laughs> and um, you know, just fascinating insights. Um, you obviously represent Vitality. Um, you're within that ecosystem. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and then I'll throw some questions around this particular topic. But I think when you give us some background to you from a doctor's perspective, um, if you can give us your view around exercise movement within this context of cancer, that would be really valuable. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. clearly. Uh, so, yes, I am a doctor, but uh, perhaps I should put out a disclaimer. I'm not an oncologist. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've not treated cancer patients. And I have seen that uh, fleetingly in the chats that there are people who unfortunately had cancer, recovering from cancer. Uh, so I won't be able to address any kind of issues directly related to the treatment of cancer. I think in vitality, our focus is mainly on prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gabby uh, mentioned that 5% of, uh, of all cancers are hereditary. Mm -hmm. and, and the rest are the environmental lifestyle, but perhaps that needs a bit of qualification, I mean, particularly for those people who've unfortunately had cancer. You know, uh, cancer is not one condition. It's actually, you know, one can think of it as a syndrome. Mm -hmm. Even though the pathology is the same, basically these cells that have undergone mutation and are growing uh, uncontrollably, that's the pathology. But when we talk about the cause, uh, then there are very many different causes uh, for different cancers. And at one end of the spectrum, uh, there will be kind of strong genetic uh, influence. So people inherit certain genes. I mean, one example of that, uh, which could be both inherited or would be a kind of random mutation. I mean, people I think are familiar with COVID or what we mean by mutation, uh, is, is a condition called retinoblastoma, mm. which occurs in infancy. It's a cancer of the eye, uh, in the eye wall. And there, you know, there's very little exposure to environmental factors and a strong genetic kind of component to that. But even when we talk about kind of genetic factors uh, influencing cancer, uh, currently when you know someone says there's a five percent or thirty percent kind of genetic risk, it doesn't mean that each individual has the same fixed genetic risk. You know, the environment in your lifestyle uh, has a tremendous effect on the genes. And there's this whole new uh, field of epigenetics. I'm not sure if people have heard that. Mm -hmm. Where, in fact, you know, previously it was just thought that you inherit your genes and then they manifest. What we now know is the genes that you inherited 
could be strongly kind of even changed mm. uh, by your environment, uh, starting even in you know in, in the womb. Uh, so your environmental factors, you know, interact uh, with your genes to influence whether you do or don't get cancer. Uh, so when we when we so looking at preventing cancer, obviously we must look at then what what are the factors that predispose people to get cancer, and they can be broadly divided. Firstly at one level between unmodifiable factors and there too, you know, there's a bit of qualification. So unmodifiable factors are things like age, mm -hmm. gender, uh, you can't really change that. But actually what you can change is the aging process. Um, so even there, you know, one wouldn't be categorical uh, about it being completely uh, unmodifiable. We know, I mean, with age, uh, there's a certain level of senescence, all the uh, aging of, of the cell, and there's these mutations that develop, which then lead to these cells multiplying, and your normal immune system, which controls those, uh, you know, aberrant cells or cells that are out of control, uh, also diminishes as you age. That's why, you know. With aging, you need boosters, or people who need more immune boosters to to boost their immunity. So your immune system drops off on one hand, your cells uh, get older, and these mutations develop. Obviously, as I said, you can alter the aging process. You can boost your immune system, uh, and we've shown recently uh, in a in a highly quoted study uh, with COVID where fitness engagement actually had mm. tremendous uh, uh, impact on hospitalization, uh, uh, ventilation, uh, and death mm. uh, in COVID patients. And fitness made almost a 40% difference in all those parameters. Mm. Mm. So fitness boosts your immune system. And the way it helps you fight an infection, it will also help you fight off these heavenly cells that, in a sense, cause cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, then talking about kind of modifiable factors, there are, there are obviously environmental factors. Um, and when we talk about the environment um, or environment factors, uh, let me just look at that. Yes, so uh, there's things in the, in the environment that we should, or environment factors we should be avoiding. Now, smoking is not a natural state, right? People mm. kind of uh, get addicted to nicotine and develop a habit of smoking. And smoking is one of the most important causes of cancer. It's, it's very strongly associated with lung cancer, uh, but in fact, there are about eight different cancers associated with smoking. Uh, you know, oral cancers, gastric cancer, even prostate cancer, bladder cancer actually, um, strongly influenced by those carcinogens in, in smoking. Um, alcohol, um, you know, there was a feeling that uh, one glass of kind of uh, a glass of wine uh, for females and two glasses for males is perhaps protective. I think that thinking is changing. Um, Doctor, you're spoiling everything. <laughs> I briefed you. Everyone who agrees will get, you know, but I think moderation is, is what we're talking about. Mm. And if you don't drink, you know. Don't drink because someone's told you it's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so, a bad alcohol is very strongly associated with also, again, many cancers, uh, but especially with excessive alcohol intake in its well known. Mm -hmm. uh, but liver cancer, um, with cirrhosis and liver cancer, uh, 
And then another environmental factor is radiation. Now, when, I, when I say radiation, one thinks about x-rays or you know, walking under these pylons. Actually, there's a form of radiation we all exposed to. Our cell phones. Uh, in, particularly in this country, and that's UV. Okay. Radiation, mm. uh, ultraviolet mm. radiation, which is responsible for uh, a tremendous mm. increase in cancers. People are just not uh, aware of sun protection. You know, they send their kids out to play in the midday without protection. Uh, and it doesn't really matter whether you're light skinned or dark skinned. Uh, we know some cancers actually. Um, uh, occur in material of, of pigmentation, uh, particularly the most serious form of, of skin cancer called melanoma. So sun protection is really very important um, and, and there should be a school policy that kids should not be playing cricket, football, midday, you know, um, early in the morning towards uh, kind of sunset, that's when, when one should be kind of late afternoon, three o'clock um, and after. Uh, and if you are, then, you know, sun creams, hats, etc., uh, long sleeves. Um, another very common cause of cancer is infection. Um, the, the, and there are three infections that stand out. There may be others as well. Uh, one is something called human papilloma virus, HPV, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, HPV uh, is almost more than 95%, I would say. I don't have the exact figure, but it's around that number of survival cancers are caused by HPV. Mm -hmm. And the simple way of preventing it is getting both girls and boys uh, before, in a sense, they become teenagers or mm -hmm. even uh, early, uh, in the early teens to get the HPV vaccine. Doc, did you uh, say girls uh, and boys? Mm. Yeah. That, that's yes. a, yeah. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that the mm. boys were something, because you always hear HPV, yeah. you know, this thing was in the context mm. of females. The, so, mm. the new recommendations are that it's girls and boys. I said cervical cancer, but actually HPV can cause uh, oral cancer, penile cancer, mm. so, wow. and a few others as well. So, um, you know, the recommendation is now extended uh, to boys and girls. So, that's one vaccine that prevents cancer. Um, the other is hepatitis B. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone is going to pick, have, pick up hepatitis B, but healthcare workers, you know, um, people who are kind of uh, sex workers, etc., you know, mm -hmm. uh, might pick up HP, uh, hepatitis B, and that's a common cause of liver cancer. Uh, so, mm -hmm. there again, there's a, a very effective vaccine available. Um, sure. And then what's not often known is, is a, a bacterium that causes uh, ulcers or has been associated with ulcers, ulcers in the past. It's called helicobacter. Uh, today, by and large, most ulcers are, you know, stomach ulcers I'm talking about. Uh, and of course, you know, things like spicy food and tomatoes and all that might worsen the symptoms of an ulcer. But in fact, those ulcers are caused by this bacterium called Helicobacter, and that's associated very strongly with uh, gastric cancer. And it's easily treatable condition, really. Um, one may need to actually see a gastroenterologist, prove the diagnosis, but it's a short course of it, uh, of antibiotics, and it clears the Helicobacter. Um, oh, wow. um, and then, I think, you know, those are things one, in a sense, might avoid, right? Smoking, uh, infections, or treat infections. Uh, but there are also things you can do more positively. Uh, in other words, to promote your health. And I think Gabby and, and you, 
uh, both of you have mentioned physical activity, um, healthy eating, obesity, mm. and I'll put the diabetes as well. Now, all those conditions, in a sense, all those factors work in synergy. You know, physical activity, in a sense, um, is, is one way of, of maintaining your weight, particularly if you've lost weight, uh, or your calorie levels, mm -hmm. uh, at least. Uh, healthy eating, obviously, it's not just about how much you eat, which leads to obesity, you know, calorie imbalance. But it's what you eat, mm. uh, and uh, again, you know, unfortunately, when, when I mention these these factors, the research uh, we can't do randomized controlled trials to show what the effect of these factors are, because humans are not like lamb rats. You know, mm. we can't actually put them in one category of a diet and keep them on that diet. For many many years, you know, see who develops cancer and who doesn't on another diet. Mm. So, in a sense, the research is always either retrospective and epidemiological. In other words, we look at mm. kind of people who develop cancer and then look at kind of what their lifestyle has been and compare them to people who have it. For instance, uh, that's how we've you know proven that. Uh, the association was so strong that it's proof that smoking causes lung cancer. It took a long time for a guy called Healy in the 50s to, to prove that association. You know, the smoking companies actually fought uh, against that evidence because the evidence was collected in that epidemiological fashion. Um, but I mean, unfortunately, there's no other way of, of doing that research. Mm. Uh, so the types of diets that are associated with cancer are ones where there's high processed uh, meats, high processed uh, other foods, you know, mm -hmm. refined carbohydrates, sugars, etc. Uh, and there's, there seems to be a strong association between that, that kind of a diet. The protective kind of diet is one that's rich in fruit and vegetable fiber. And this area of research is really exploding with what we call the microbiome. Mm. So, you know, there's a whole ecosystem mm. in your mm. gut uh, that doesn't just influence what happens in your gut, but also seems to influence what happens in your brain. Mm. Um, these microbes releases either good or bad kind of uh, chemicals. Um, and I think the, the, the field is exploding really and we'll get a lot more clarity on the microbiome. Mm. Um, obesity definitely associated with uh, certain cancers. So all these cancers are so t associated with about 8 to 10 different, can uh, different types of cancers. The common ones are breast, colon cancer, uh, um, prostate cancer, which tends to occur more commonly in people who are inactive, eat an unhealthy diet, obese or have diabetes. Um, and I think living, you know, even I wasn't entirely convinced that physical activity can prevent something like breast cancer. It can't prevent it completely. And of course, if you have a strong genetic predisposition you know, somehow it will manifest even if you are active. So I don't think people who develop breast, breast cancer must, might, must feel that, you know, they've done something wrong, they haven't lived their life uh, kind of properly. Uh, but we do know from these epidemiolo epidemiological studies that these factors are protective. Um, and physical activity, uh, I mean, to be honest, uh, I don't have much experience with lever arming, mm -hmm. and I didn't have an opportunity to go in and do the research on lever arming and, uh, and particularly cancer. I mean, what I do know is I sit, I'm sitting in my room, which is a double story house, and uh, we can look into a 
onto the, our neighbor's patio. Mm -hmm. And they have two young kids. And there's a trampoline there. And these kids come mm -hmm. four o'clock, you know, they're jumping up and down the trampoline, laughing. And it, uh, my wife and I, uh, I mean, our kids are long gone, uh, have great joy actually just mm -hmm. listening to these kids having fun. Uh, so it seems like a, a you know, a fun form of activity. Uh, but all forms of physical activity really are, are beneficial, you know, and we, we've already kind of alluded to sedentary behaviour being a risk factor. So, I mean, I would put uh, activity in, in sort of various ca categories. Uh, obviously, if you're sitting, you must do something, you know, get up on the couch mm. and just move. Change my legs. But if you're moving, you need to move more. Uh, and if you're uh, exercising, you must exercise more. The general recommendation is to do, uh, in terms of duration, at least 150 minutes of uh, what we call cardiovascular activity or aerobic activity activity that increases your heart rate, it leads to a moderate intensity. Uh, what we mean by moderate intensity in simple terms is, is you should be doing like a brisk walk where you cannot uh, Talk. Ha mm. hold a conversation mm. easily. Uh, you'd have to kind of, you know, stop and be and talking. So that's moderate. Vigorous, of course, you really can't have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of heart rate, which is kind of uh, a bit more accurate, and there are different formulas, but roughly between uh, 70 to 78 or 80 percent of your Max. uh, maximum heart rate is moderate intensity, and above mm -hmm. kind of that. Is vigorous. Mm. Um, I mean, that's five times a week. That's 30 minutes five times a week. There yeah, are most people watching this webinar, I'm sure, are not getting that. Hey, five times a week is pretty mm. much every day of the week you need to be doing 30 minutes of 70 to 80 percent of your maximum, which is actually pretty high. That's you are sweating, you are out of breath, you are, you know, panting. You know, it's what a workout. You know what she's looking at me, Doc? It's because. <laughs> Every time I want to take a rest day, I'm she like, reminds mm, me that you there's don't no need such a rest thing day. as a rest yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think that's what we recommend, and no uh, that people uh, don't achieve that. Uh, unfortunately, most people, a lot of people don't. Only people estimate about 30 to 40% mm -hmm. of people achieve that kind of uh, that level of activity. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think. It, it's, if you're doing nothing and you start doing something, then your Bit risk of dying drops precipitously, yeah. actually, right up to about uh, 150 minutes. Then it continues, in fact, even if you can go up to 300 minutes a week. But beyond 300, it seems that actually the benefit seems to diminish considerably. Mm -hmm. uh, not that okay. it increases, but that. But overtraining, I tell you, <laughs> there is such a thing as overtraining, right? It drops your immune system. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it depends, mm. you know. On what a, you do. A, an Olympic athlete uh, who has mm. enough time to recover yeah. actually mm. can do a lot more. Mm. Um, but most of us, you know, who have pretty busy lives, I think if, if you know, a physical you're a trainer, um, then you can put in a lot more. Mm. But for the average person, we should try it. 150 minutes, I would say, of a brisk, 30 minute brisk walk, you know, a day mm. uh, for five days a week. Mm. Uh, that's what you should aim for. Beyond that will be a bonus. Uh, and, uh, and whether you do it uh, with walking briskly or dancing, rebounding, or rebounding yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Get your heart going. And I agree with you, I think sedentary behaviour is an independent risk factor. Mm -hmm. So if you do your 30 minutes or even an hour a day, and for the rest of the time, mm -hmm. you know, you're sitting in front of a computer or watching TV, your risk still increases. So you, while it diminishes for the physical activity, it increases again a little with so much. So even if you're working, every 20 minutes or so, get up, 
walk around, take a walk in the garden, mm. you know, do something that takes you away and and gets you that circulating as you as you were talking about. Fantastic. Uh, but, um, mm. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for your time this evening. Fascinating. Um, again, I can listen mm. to you for, this is go on and on and on, but uh, invaluable posits. Yeah. Thank you for the time. Thank you to uh, Discovery Vitality uh, for, for, you know, for, for being here tonight, being mm. one of the sponsors of the webinar tonight, and, uh, and a very valuable partner to the Bounty brand. Mm. So thank you, Dr. Patel. Thank you so uh, much. We appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. um, so, about the wine, though. But yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the daily <laughs> champagne, drink, I'm going to have to cut it down. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we, uh, we, we're going to move over to someone that's um, we, you and Mark yes. know each other so, really well. So Mark so. and I um, go way back. I mean, we are colleagues. We've done some work together in the, in the industry. I mean, the media industry is, is not that big in South Africa. And uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Mark sent me a message. I was following his, his journey. I mean, I, you know, we're friends on Facebook and all of that. But Mark pinged me out the blue and said, my friend, I need a rebounder. <laughs> and when I thought of rebounding, I thought of you, the rebounding queen. I need some help. Can we chat? And so we met here at our studios and Mark kind of just yeah, told me a little bit about a story and I'm not going to get into that because that's his story to tell. Mm -hmm. And Mark, you have got thousands, thousands and thousands of people out there that are rooting for you, that yeah. are following you. They are invested in your story and want to know so much. Like, how did you know that there was a, a, a warning sign? You know, like what mm -hmm. triggers? What, what was it that you thought, I better go get checked? Or how did it all come about? What are you doing about it right now? Um, what's happening in your world? Because you're yeah. posting these beautiful, inspirational posts all the time. Um, and we just want to know a little bit about the history because I know you've got a long history with cancer. It's not something that sprung up out of the blue now. It, you, your journey is two decades old, mm -hmm. you know? So if you can just shed some light What you say and how you say it affects the way you feel about it. So I speak a lot on social media about, um, good to have you guys back in the studio with us again. And uh, <laughs> look, he was on his phone. There we go. There's us having it. Oh, I'm on my phone. I'm on my phone. <laughs> it's okay. I know you were watching us on mobile. That's okay. Um, I'll, catch, I'll catch you up on the story I was telling there. Um, I, 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 what I realized is yeah. chemotherapy is a scary word. I don't use that word if I can help it. I use the word healing juice. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel better. And if you choose certain words, it'll make you feel better. I realized I must stop saying I'm a warrior. I must stop saying I'm fighting cancer. I'm battling a disease. Because what that does, it puts you into fight or flight. I don't want to be in fight or flight. I want to be in rest and digest. So my words now are harmony balance how do i bring peace and and calm this back to to the physicality of of my body and that's why i think i've embarked on this journey uh, with a new understanding of how to see things and instead of saying i've only got three months to live i'm saying i'm cured wow. i'm cured already in my mind i am cured it's still a bit of a journey i'm not under any illusion uh, but it's been an incredible journey over the past three months. And Lisa, to you and your team, you've been instrumental in my journey. And to just, to, to just go to my CAT scan last week, after three months of chemotherapy and immunotherapy and all the other things, uh, you go for a CAT scan to have an evaluation. And doctors are hoping that there's possibly a, a little bit of a shrinkage or second best option, there's no growth. And... I'm very fortunate to be able to say that in total, I had about a 40% shrinkage in, across the board, uh, the tumors. And I, you know, that is, that is wonderful. I mean, I want, to, I want to cry right now. And in fact, being strong, and I was on a, I was on a webinar, funny enough, uh, three hours ago. Um, uh, it's called a uh, Made Strong campaign. And I was uh, telling the media about uh, what it means to me to be strong and being strong is i used to think it was being tough being chuck norris but being strong is about acknowledging your vulnerability mm -hmm. having a moment when you're feeling sad and i know there's cancer patients watching right now hear me when you're feeling sad you feel like you're sorry for yourself allow that moment you don't have to be tough all the time have a cry i've cried many a time and i still will cry a lot but the difference between 
collapsing and being brave or strong is that after you've had your cry, you uncurl yourself from the fetal position and you stand up again. Mm. Not every day is a good day, but positivity is knowing that when it's not a good day, the sun is still shining out there. And sometimes you've actually got to take a moment and have a moment of gratitude and just say, what am I grateful for? Despite everything going on, mm. what, what in my world am I grateful for? Because when you have a moment of gratitude, there's no anger, there's no tension. You cannot be cross. You cannot be in that state when you're having a true moment of gratitude. And I try and have a moment of gratitude every single day. So what has resulted in, in me being where I am now, as opposed to the statistical curve where the doctors said, mm, we don't think it's looking that good because the doctors have said my, my progress has been remarkable. It's still a long journey and you know, there's a lot to do. But part of my, my protocol of what I do, and Lisa, coming back to, to you and your team, uh, you've been so instrumental in, in part of that protocol. Number one is diet. Um, to Carly and to Tamsin, uh, your team, that have helped me get on the right track, because eating is so vital. The doctor was talking about eating a moment ago. Cancer loves acidity. I don't want my body to be acidic, I want it to be alkaline. Cancer loves sugar. So there's no sugar for me, there's no dairy, there's no gluten, there's no meat, there's no coffee, there's no alcohol. It sounds distressing, and in the beginning it was. But it's amazing how it's, I've adapted, and even my palate now, I've got no desire for that. Fruit is so sweet, I've right? Become, it's, um, not, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear okay. you. I can hear you. You're, you're, um, you taste things for the first time. When you take all of those um, sort of chemicals out of your diet, um, you can taste fruit for what it is. You, everything has a different taste. Don't you find that? When you start to indeed. cut it out, everything is more fragrant. Everything is sweeter. It's, um, you finally taste food how it should taste. It's taste yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And, and I, I do only eat organic now. So there's no GMOs, no pesticides. So I'm, I'm, I'm eating the, the true flavors of what it should be. Every morning I start with a, a big bowl of greens, which we, yeah. which we blitz. And to be honest with you, because I throw in about three cloves of garlic and and there's ginger and whatnot. It is, oh no, I, I reek. And it, it's, oh my word, it's awful. But I, I say awful with a smile on my face because, I t pardon me, I take it in and I know it's doing amazing things. And uh, to, to Tamsin, who is a chef within the, your repertoire, your brand, mm. she's helped guide me with, with food. I say to her, okay, well, I, I can't eat this, I can't eat that, but I don't want to eat bland. I still want a bit of flavor. How can you help? And she's come up with some creative meals uh, she's given me, um, I've got lentil babuati, um, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I was so excited when she said she could do that for me. Within all the parameters of what I can't eat, there are still things you can do. So my recommendation would be to anyone watching, get hold of Lisa and the team, because uh, there are still amazing things you can eat. You have to watch your diet. I have chemo, and the bloke next to me is having a Nando's burger. Not that I'm against Nando's burger, yeah. yay, yay, chicken. But, you know, the other one's having Coke and chips. I'm doing everything possible because I've got one chance. I don't have a second chance here. I'm defying the odds, hopefully, and I'm going to be around for a long time. My aim is to see my girls walk down the aisle. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And, you, you know, I don't expect them to be child brides getting married next year. They're really young. <laughs> They're 10 and 12. I wanted to be 15 years. But the other important thing, I know I'm waffling here, no, 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 is no. rebounder. Mm -hmm. Because I got hold of you at the start of my journey because the oncologist I saw said to me, do a bit of rebounding, you need to clear your lymph nodes. Mm. I didn't know much about that, mm. but I knew one thing. There was an association, Lisa Reddy, rebounding. <laughs> Hi Lisa, how are you doing? Um, talk to me more about rebounding. And ever since then, every day, in fact, just before this webinar, I, I jumped on the rebound. And my previous webinar finished at about 20 to seven, and I knew we were going live at seven. I got 15 minutes on the rebounder, awesome. yeah. and I do it every single day. There are times when I go, oh, I could just lie on the couch. I don't, mm. there's, there's no second chances here. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the rebounder, there are days when I, I, I'm quite vigorous, there are other days when I do more, more of a pulse. I have to be careful because I have the tumor in my femur. So it's not as if I am going crazy every single day, but I know from our discussions about the basics of the lymph system, the lymph, your lymph system is the creepy crawly of the body, but it doesn't have a natural pump. Mm. You have to use gravity 
to get it to pump. And believe me, I've got lots of toxins. Um, I've got chemotherapy in me. I need to be able to flush my system. And to be able to do that, and I couldn't do it initially for more than two minutes, right at the very beginning. Now I'm doing on average, I'm doing about 15 minutes um, in a session. And, you know, I kind of look at my watch and the reason why I stop is that I've got something else I need to do. I could actually carry on jumping. And even when I went to Sabi for a week, I folded the rebounder over like a shawarma, stuck it in the boot, and I rebounded there. So it's, it's so much more efficient and, and easy. You know, I, not that I've got anything against a treadmill, but to have a, a huge contraption there, which is a, an overpriced washing line for so many people. <laughs> but you've got the option to have a rebounder that you can fold away, jump up and down. And even when I did a fir my first post about rebounding, just the questions coming through, through people going, I didn't know about that. Mm. I don't profess to have all the knowledge whatsoever. I'm on a continual learning curve, mm. but I, I thank you guys for, for helping me understand rebounding, the importance of draining the lymph nodes, and I'm feeling better now than I did at the end of February. I've got more energy now, Wow! and mm. you know, I'm, I'm going to be around <laughs> for a long, long time. You are. Mark, what a, what a testimony. You thank are. you, thank so you so much. So I'm actually feeling really yeah. tearful. Yeah. <laughs> I could talk right now, but I'm just so proud of you because uh, you have taken every mm. single morsel of information that I gave you and all the specialists that you've seen and all the things that you've read and all your gratitude and your mind power and you are just giving it this 100%. And Mark, if there's anyone that deserves to get this, like, this perfect like yeah, results in a couple months time it's you like you are doing everything mm -hmm. possible and you are such an amazing advocate for come on guys you have a lot of power do everything that you can mm -hmm. mark you're incredible thank yeah. you for your kind you, words thank you so much yeah just, uh, my, my message to to everyone and once again especially to those going through uh, cancer at the moment uh, and these are the, the messages that really touch me the most is because i do post a lot on social media and it's not because i want people to feel sorry for me I, I want, I've got a platform and I'm using it to, to encourage. And I, I feed off that energy as well. But the messages that really touch me the most are, are those where people say, I, I couldn't get out of bed this morning. I read your post and I stood up. And, and, and that I find incredible. And the reason why I, I have the energy I have, in part, one of the many things I do, and from everything I do, they all have an effect in different ways. One of them is rebounding. Mm. So my recommendation would be is get a rebounder, do it in your pajamas, yes. it's all okay. <laughs> and as you say, if you, even if you start with a minute here or there, a couple of times a day, just get those lymphs working, get your body draining. Let's, let's help your body get the toxins out your system. Thank yeah. you, Mark. You know, Mark, I just want to tell you something from my perspective. I never told you when I saw you in person the other day when, when you came around to the studio. But when I closed my eyes and you were speaking, I mean, I'm a super fan. Just know that. Like, I'm a super, super fan. Your voice is so Soothing. iconic. Uh, it's, it's an incredible mm -hmm. voice. If you hear Mark ever, if you get the privilege of meeting Mark in person, mm -hmm. I think two aspects is it's the voice, and it's an incredible voice, um, and, and it's so iconic, and it's, and it's got a legacy in South Africa that's quite incredible. There's a history to it. But the other thing is, you know, whenever I look at your posts, and I'll just say this from a personal perspective, I'm not going through cancer. But, you know, we're all dealing with our own <coughs> things uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, yes? our own struggles and travails. And I think one of the things that I want you to know, outside of cancer, outside of your particular condition, you're inspiring people to just get on with life and to deal with their problems that are not necessarily medical related. Mm -hmm. And we all, I mean, this is the, the number one syndrome that everyone's dealing with right now, and we can see it in our client base, is anxiety. You know, economic anxiety, um, pandemic-based anxieties, and also excuses. Excuses. A lot of, lot of excuses all the yeah. time. Yeah, you're, you're inspiring people to just overcome. Stand up. And and I think that is, that is that is that is that mm, is huge, 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 huge. So keep going. We yeah. we always behind you. Um, and you know, we didn't. By the way, we didn't invite Mark mm. to be a rebounding billboard. I mean, not, <laughs> even when Mark. By the way, when you posted. Um, your post up on, on, on Facebook and Instagram, our salespeople ran up to Lisa and went, let's go do something with this. And Lisa was like, no, yeah. you know, let's, we need to be respectful here. This is not about getting mm -hmm. people to buy or a commercial effort. This is about changing mm -hmm. someone's life and being there for somebody. Mm -hmm. So uh, we authentically, genuinely behind you and anything more that we can yeah. do 
for your, you. Your yeah. realness and humanness yeah. is just so incredible. Um, you know, you've done amazing things in your awesome career, mm -hmm. and you've got a long career ahead of you still, yeah. doing great stuff. And yet when you meet Mark, he's just so humble and so real. In your posts, you're so real. Tonight, you're so real. And it's unusual, and yeah. it's wonderful. And just, yeah, huge, huge thanks for being you. Thanks yeah. for using your platform for good and for yeah. change and to help others, whether they have mm -hmm. cancer or not, just to, to wake up every day and make that choice. You know, get up, get moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, guys, you have thank a choice here. Yeah. Yeah. Be better. So thank, thank you, Mark. You. Yeah. And, um, thank you so much. You yeah, know, I just want to say to, to everyone that sends me well wishes, um, if, if I could put it all into a bucket, the collective power of positive thought and prayer that I'm receiving, I thank you so much. And in turn, I extend my hand out to every single cancer patient and say, you're not alone. Hold my hand, mm -hmm. one day at a time, just look up at the sun mm -hmm. and have a moment and smile. Wow. Thank you, Mark. Excellent, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Ciao, ciao, Mark. Pleasure, guys. Wow. wow. I mean, this, this, <laughs> this doesn't, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible testimony and, and Mark's just incredible. And just the way he's handling his journey, no matter what the outcome may be, it's just, that so positive. The, the, the and inspiration. Know, and, and yeah. So if you don't follow Mark Wilgram. Time to. <laughs> time to. Go into his Instagram yeah. and his Facebook and post up there and, and just watch what he says. Mm -hmm. And it's just an incredible thing. And you know what? One of the things that I always hear Lisa, when, especially when she's dealing with somebody that's sick. So Lisa, a lot of people like Mark reached out to Lisa. A lot of people um, text her and she's so open. And, and, you know, like I'll see her at 10 o'clock at night laying in bed. Mm -hmm furiously on WhatsApp and I'm thinking like what and when I look at a phone it's people that are looking for help but you know the thing that keeps coming through the thread that keeps coming through all the time is I wish I under I did move when I could have I wish I had done the things then which I knew I should have done I wish I'd known more I wish I'd yeah, oh, yeah I just wish I'd moved the one is like I mm -hmm. wish I'd moved I wish mm -hmm. I'd done the exercise I wish I'd listened there's a lot I of regrets uh, yeah. with a lot of the people that reach out to me there's a lot of regrets um, some people act not because they've yeah. actually done a lot of good um, and they still land up with cancer and they still end up with other you yeah. know um, lifestyle related diseases or, or just diseases that they definitely don't deserve okay so sometimes it's not that yeah. uh, but there are also a lot of clients uh, that say I wish I had just done a little bit more I wish I'd known more because now it's not that it's too late but now they're dealing with disease and yeah. disease you know now they're dealing with all kinds mm -hmm. of treatment and lifestyle setbacks and they just have such regrets that if only they had just moved a bit more and eat a little bit cleaner and just cut back on those cigarettes cut them out mm -hmm. you know they just wish they had just taken those steps in their 20s 30s and 40s because they wouldn't be sitting with this most probably in their 50s and 60s yeah. um, now they've got the wealth they've got all of that but they don't have their health you know yeah. they have nothing really so yeah it's just and it's it's been a, it's always a wake-up call and and sometimes your staff will grab the phone and be like okay talk about this and you know my clients remind me every single day how lucky i am how, how grateful i am to have my health but they are also a constant reminder that if you do not look after yourself and make the right choices lisa this is exactly what is going to happen to you mm. so i'm grateful to my clients every day for being that constant mirror in my face saying hey make the right choice mm. because i get to see what happens every day when you don't yeah. and it's quite it's an eye-opening thing you know yeah. So, okay, yes. cool. That's, that's on, incredible. So. Mark, Mark Pogrom, Thanks, again, Mark. I don't know if he's yeah. listening in, but yeah. thank you, Mark. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're such an inspiration. You're iconic. Um, Sam. <laughs> Sam from Hi. Oncology Buddy. Hi, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, when I was looking at the agenda, and like, how do you... Yeah. Because, I, like, how do you get... The, is Mark supposed to be last or not first? Or, <laughs> and I thought, no, let's end with Oncology Buddies because I think it's one of those tool sets. So, you know, Mark is inspirational. There's a lot to take from there. The doctor spoke from vitality. There's a lot to take from there. Cancer Association. You know, we had the, the, the you know somebody that works in oncology speaking to us about that. All inspiration. But I feel like what you've got is this platform that's a tool, so people can go find information, and engage, yeah, and, and yeah. engage in a community. So tell us a little bit more about it. Absolutely. So I think that's actually the right way to explain us. So we are. Uh, um, patient-centric publications, so we print and online. So on this side, we speak about all different types of cancers, and we are um, supported by cancer. And on this side, we talk specifically on breast cancer, and we are partners with the Breast Health Foundation. And like you said, all of our, you know, all the the um, guests that spoke tonight, that's pretty much what we do. So we um, are lucky enough to have contributors, um, medical 
professionals that write our content for us and we put it in layman's terms so we make it easy for the patient to understand and then also listening to Mark speak just reminded me of how important our patient stories are yeah. because they bring it all together I mean when Mark spoke I don't know anyone here that didn't have a bit of a lump in their no, throat yeah, thinking wow this is really what what, what we're here for tonight yeah. and um, I mean we get we that's pretty much what we do is we find those stories from all types of people, from all different walks of background that are living cancer, cause, with cancer, because cancer doesn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. And I think also, you know, something that Mark said that was profound for me is that the battle, the fighting, we also, we phrase our content around living with cancer. Mm -hmm. And because you can choose to live with your cancer. Mm -hmm. So early detection is vital. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, lifestyle choices. Right. So we are a lifestyle publication and yeah. I awesome. think. So where, I, do, where do we go get more information? Where can people go online? Yeah, so our URLs are, so if you're looking for all different types of cancer, it's www.oncologybuddies.com. Okay. And if you're looking breast cancer specific, it's www.buddiesforlife.co.za. And okay. um, we are a free publication, so we are delivered via Medipost okay. to 105 different drop-off points all throughout South Africa. And um, so you can get them at hospitals, oncology centers, breast care centers, support groups. So, yeah. Fantastic. And do you have a social media platform where people yes, can follow Yes, yes. So we are on Facebook and on Instagram. Also go, going by Oncology Buddies and Buddies for Life. Awesome. Amazing. Thanks, Sam. I think what Thank you're you. doing is incredible. And I, we went through it. We'll be contributing to it. Oh, um, fantastic. And participating in that. And obviously anyone that comes over will inform mm. them of that. And Thank you. Yes, that's great. Thank yeah. You Thank you. Tonight. Thanks, guys. Really, it's really been really awesome. Thank it. you. Yeah. So I think this is the conclusion. And, you know, yeah. I learned so much tonight, number yeah. one. Number two is um, I just want to thank all our sponsors and our participants, Oncology mm -hmm. Buddies, Sam and the team, um, Cancer Association of South Africa. Megan, thank you for participating. Thank you for the seal yeah. um, and endorsement um, and mm -hmm. uh, vitality, bringing Dr. Patel mm -hmm. on and some of the things that he said there. You know, Dr. Patel, I can listen to and listen to just as a, a fountain of information. Um, and then uh, Mark. I mean, Mark is yeah. just, uh, what a highlight. I'm feeling so moved by it, yeah, actually. Very, very I'm moved slightly by it. speechless, but... Uh, yeah. Thank I you. For, first of all, I don't know if he's listening way. in, but we didn't know if we'd, if we'd had the strength, if we'd be able yeah. to come in. And he, we wanted him in Gosh. studio, but... He looks like so full of energy and yeah. vitality. His skin's glowing, and he's like sitting there. He's just done one talk, and I, yeah. 15 minutes of bouncing, another talk. And he still looks like... Mark, like but you know what I like what he alive said. Alive and thriving. But and you know what it's, it's incredible. incredible. What he says, he says he's got more. He feels more alive yeah, now than he, he had before. When I first engaged with yeah, him, yeah. It's a fantastic, fantastic testimony. So, so look, the objective of tonight wasn't to present rebounding as a cure for anything. Yeah. We want to make that very, very clear to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the key message and the common thread throughout all the things is movement. Yeah. You saw with Mark. He's doing rebounding, but the key fact is he's moving. Mm -hmm. You know, movement is such an important thing. Movement throughout the day. If you, you know, for living a preventative lifestyle means moving continuously and respecting your body all the time. And mm -hmm. obviously we encourage rebounding, but again, it's not, it's not a cure. No, it it's just convenient. It makes it easy because That's it's it. right there. It's affordable. It's convenient. It's portable. Like Mark said, you can take it anywhere with you. There's no excuse. Like it's cold outside. It's raining. There's wild animals. There's whatever. You know, you didn't bring your bike or you don't like cycling or you didn't, couldn't pack your treadmill in your car. So there's, it just makes exercising just that much easier to do when it's right here. And it's also all inclusive for yeah. a really overweight individual to a beginner to the elderly where we're seeing more and more elderly clients uh, that's why yesterday we did a post celebrating the clients that are 50 60 70s yeah. that are rebounding because it's something that they can do too with the support bar um, and from children so it's a, it's a really all-inclusive fun way to exercise that's also time efficient um, it's effective it's healing it helps with the with the lymph so it does a lot of things at all at one time so I've been rebounding since I was 19 years old um, so that's a very long time two decades ha, um, ago but I've been doing it on a daily basis now since I was um, a mom you know to try and get rid of baby weight and I had a lot of pain and I used to get injured all the time I have huge inflammation in my body and I've used rebounding as a low impact form of exercise that doesn't hurt me um, that I can do every day because I'm one of those people that I, I need to move every day and I need to do my 30 to 60 minutes a day otherwise um, I just don't manage as well 
Uh, so for me, any other form of exercise hurts me when I do it for 30 to 60 minutes a day. This is the only one that doesn't hurt me. So it's, I found my thing. And now my, my big life purpose is to get more and more people to try it because I do think that it is such an all-inclusive form of exercise and it's fun and it's not going to, to, to give you pain. And for me, that's important. It's definitely a webinar topic for down the line where we want to talk about living with pain because there's a lot of people out there that think it's normal and it's not. So it's a webinar topic for another day. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's just, like I said, I want everybody to have a rebound in their home and just bounce, guys. It's, um, it's, it's definitely something that's totally underestimated. It's not um, understood. And we need more people like Mark to come forward and tell their story about how it's changed their lives, like for sure. Yeah. And I, I live it. So mm. by the way, so because I live with Lisa, we have about 10 rebounders and a mini trampoline in our house. And we don't pack it away. So if you have a rebounder, yeah. don't pack it away. Um, because well, we'll find Bella yeah. just roaming around and then we'll find her on a rebounder for about 15 minutes yeah. doing her that own thing. That is actually yeah. a very common thing. People say to me, can it fold and can I put it under my bed? Or can I like put yeah. it in the don't. garage? Or, and I'm like, no, the key is to always leave it out because the kids will bounce in between. You will bounce whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil or whilst you're watching some Netflix or catching up with the news or whatever it is. You will find little opportunities to bounce if it's there. Mm -hmm. If it's folded away, it's another excuse. Oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the two minutes right now, oh, nah, it's under the couch. You know, don't. Take those excuses away. Leave it out there for all to see. And if you are having guests over, encourage them to try it because yeah. people are like, oh, I don't want to come around and, you know, people to come around, there's like rebounders. So what? It shows that you're investing in your health. Mm. It shows that you, your health matters to you and your family. Right. It's a good, um, it's, it's being a good role model. Can yeah. we respect everyone's time? There's yes. two things we'll end with. Lisa says these things all the time. <laughs> Movement is medicine. Yeah. And, and I love that. Movement is medicine. And the thing that you always say, too, that I hear you say all the time is exercise that heals doesn't harm. Mm -hmm. A healing exercise. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we're so proponents of rebounding. But uh, respect your bodies. Respect the gift that you, you have. You forgot my last movement, words. Nothing feels as good as feeling good feels. There you go. <laughs> Nothing feels as good as feeling, it's feeling good. good feels. We, we need to trademark this thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much for spending your evening with us, everyone. Thanks yeah. to all our Thanks guests everybody. again. Thank Thanks you, Mark, for, for doing what you did. Yes. Tonight. Thank you for spending yeah. an evening with us. We really, really appreciate yeah. it. We've got tons of other webinars, so go take a look at them. You can get them on our e-store for like either one rand They're or one zero rand, rand. Just because we had to make a financial yeah. um, amount for it to zap to, to the other platform. So mm -hmm. we've got ones on microbiome yeah. and the gut. Gut health. And immunity, digestion, um, inflammation, which is a big topic at the moment. Yeah. Lots uh, of others. Lots, lots. Thanks, go everyone. listen to them. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.